with a 600 horsepower gas turbine engine that could haul not one but two trailers at the same time and with amenities like a bathroom and TV, this was supposed to be the future of trucking in America. It was glamorous, beautiful and the sign of what the super highways of tomorrow would look like, but it almost came to a heartbreaking end. So stick around until the end of this video to find out the story of Ford's big red turbine truck from the 60s and how it nearly disappeared from the face of earth after years and years of collecting dust in a warehouse. The year is 1963 and Chrysler is presenting the future of cars in the form of its turbine car. It was revolutionary and it worked and sounded more or less like a jet engine. Fast forward one year and Ford is trying to impress everyone at the 1964 World Fair with not one but two vehicles. One is the brand new Ford Mustang which will go on to become an icon of the motoring world and the other is Big Red, a gas turbine powered dual trailer 34 wheel big rig semi truck. That's a mouthful and also one of the most interesting and cool vehicles Ford has ever made. And it almost disappeared, never to be seen again. But I'll get to that part later. Now I want to tell you what the truck was all about. Designed and engineered by Ford's scientific research laboratory and styling team during the early 60s, this 96-foot project truck was put together by Roy Lunn. That's the same Roy Lunn that's credited as being the father of the modern SUV, the original Jeep Cherokee XJ, and the grandfather of the Ford GT40. Big Red had a height of 13 feet and a gas turbine engine that developed 600 horsepower and 855 pound-feet of torque. The engine was called the 705 and was mated to an Allison 5-speed automatic transmission to drive the tandem axles. The 705 was developed in-house by Ford, which is really cool. Something that's Less cool is the way YouTube's algorithm works because it seems to favor channels with a lot of subscribers. So subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps. Thanks. The development of the gas turbine engine began earlier than the public was aware with the idea that it would be a good fit for the United States military for vehicles like tanks, minesweepers and ships, but that didn't really take off either. The interior was made out of steel and it could accommodate a driver and two passengers in comfort and style, with an air ride suspension for the cab, a full kitchen with hot and cold running water, as well as a bathroom and a TV. What's more, the driver or passengers would enter the cab by activating a special switch that would open the door and lower a retractable ladder. And if you somehow forgot in what year all of this was going on, it's 1964. That's 57 years ago. The gas tank had a 280 gallon capacity which gave the semi a range of about 600 miles at a cruising speed of 70 and with a gross vehicle weight of 180,000 pounds. It's quite the compact little beast and it's really impressive when you consider that Ford managed to shove a lot of tech inside it, including an air conditioning unit. Moreover, Ford's truck was the first of its kind to have a suspended cab, something that's taken for granted nowadays. During the 1960s, Big Red traveled the United States on a promotional tour for Ford and people seemed to like the whole idea. I mean, what's not to like? It's basically a truck from the Jetsons. There's even some evidence that suggests Ford execs actually wanted to put the thing into production but timing couldn't have been worse for the new and exciting gas turbine era. 1963 marked the introduction of the Clean Air Act, which wasn't a big deal in and of itself, but it meant states could establish their own emission reduction programs. And that was bad news for gas turbine engines because they weren't exactly emissions free. In fact, they were really thirsty, especially at low speeds. This, coupled with the huge development costs associated with making a brand new truck with new tech in it, and the fact that different states had different requirements for gas turbines, meant that Big Red was retired sometime in the late 60s. 
And it's not just Big Red that suffered a loss. Chevy's own gas turbine efforts eventually came to a dead stop too. The national tour it was involved in wrapped up in the mid-60s and an unknown quantity of sheer luck prevented this cool American truck from going to the crusher. One story says that the rig was parked at a Ford facility in Michigan and then it was bought by Hallman Moody in the late 60s. Hallman Moody was Ford's factory-sponsored race team and they had a lot of know-how with cars made by the Blue Oval. But another, much more interesting story says that Big Red was being hauled through the southwest when the transport rig broke down and Holman Moody towed it back to its Charlotte headquarters. And Ford basically forgot about it and never came to retrieve it, which is an incredible tale. Whatever the real outcome though, the tractor was indeed at Holman and Moody and it landed in the race team's storage hangar next to the Charlotte Douglas International Airport where it stayed until 1978. Another interesting note is that Ford kept the original turbine engine and in its place there was a V8 installed, although it's not clear which one. And then in 78, Holman and Moody held the everything must go yard sale of the century which included Big Red's tractor alongside a host of V8s, spare wheels and other things. The Blue Oval's mighty experimental turbine truck was sold to an anonymous buyer and then it basically disappeared from the public eye. But that doesn't mean it's gone for good. According to an article on thedrive.com, there's some circumstantial evidence that shows Big Red is still up and running, albeit with another engine and without its famous dual trailers, which appear to have simply disappeared. Some comments say that the tractor was once painted blue and white and that it went through an extensive restoration process that gave it back its original red and white scheme. It apparently runs and drives just fine but the owner is extremely cautious about the whereabouts of Big Red and doesn't want anyone to know where it is. Which is a bit weird seeing how such a machine should belong in a museum if you ask me. But who am I to judge? At least the truck is in good shape and maybe someday it will see the light of day once again. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you check it out if it was publicly displayed? Also don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when we post a new video. Thanks for watching.